throw here. Okay. okay. All right, so we are ready for the final session of the day at Big Talk from Small Libraries 2018. I am Krista Porter, your host here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, our last session of the day is um, more than summer lunches. This is um, the end of the day. Maybe we are getting hungry. Hopefully talking about food won't be a little too much for some people. But you had your, your lunch earlier and maybe brought some afternoon snacks. Um, so because we're talking about lunches now, um, more than summer lunches, social, cultural, and healthy connections. Um, on, um, with us, joining us for this presentation is Janet Reynolds. Hi, Janet. Hello. How are you? She is um, a well dual purpose dual librarian. I'm not sure. <laughs> she is both a public and school librarian. Um, and I'll let you explain exactly where you are at there in Kansas. She's um, in Kansas, south of us. What school? Where you? How, how does that work out there? All right. Um, I work at the public library uh, evenings, weekends, summertime, and mm -hmm. uh, during the school year up until this May, I will be. Uh, I've been the high school librarian there for about 14 years. Ah, so okay. retiring from there and going to do full-time public uh, starting in the summer. So, ah, all right. All right. All right. So go ahead and take away. Tell us about your school lunch, your summer lunch program. Yes. Um, let's see that. I can't tell slides change in here. There. Whoops. So it went too there fast. Yep. Uh, we're going the wrong direction. Let's go back. Uh, you should be able to get to the first one there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lacine, uh, the city of the Swan uh, on the banks of the Meridazine. Most people don't even try to say the name of my town, much less uh, uh, mess with it. Um, Lacine, Lacine, you said? Lacine. 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 It's French, uh, it means the Swan. And our river that we're on is the Meridazine, which is the Marsh of the Swans. Um, it was founded in 1869, and the library and uh, the town and the museum are all getting ready to celebrate our sesquicentennial in 2019. Uh, we are a, a small library. Uh, listening to some of these others, we're going, wow, we are small. <laughs> we have about 1,100 people. And we serve a, a district rather than just a town. So there's about 2,400 in our taxing district. Um, we're open about 45 hours a week. We have uh, three uh, employees that work about 35 hours a week and one part time. Uh, the first library is this little building here. And that was the Zeta Library and it was built in 1906. Uh, from where I sit today, I can see the all three libraries that we've had in our community. Uh, the Zeta Library was run by the Zeta Zeta Sorority, and it wasn't a public library per se, but it was what they had. Um, and then in 1960s, we moved to this uh, brick building over here, and it was remodeled in 1976. And then we outgrew that. Whoops. Uh, I think I lost the. Uh, let's try this again here. We we moved across the street and built a new library. Are we going to be able to switch slides here? Um, you should be. Do you have uh, dual screens that you're working with? Uh huh. Okay, you should be able to from either on the slide itself or if you have the other presentation version of it, yeah. the presentation view, presenter view. Let me see what this does here. Here we go. Yeah. And in uh, 2007, we moved into our new facility. Uh, we knew we were going to do need to do more programming. Uh, we're about 50 miles south of Kansas City. Uh, we're We've almost become a bedroom community for Kansas City. They get on 69 Highway and shoot to the city to work. And that kind of changed the face of our community. Um, people were coming to the library for programs that we could offer. And the first uh, time that we talked about summer lunches, 
we were doing a mad science program and we had kids coming in at noon and they were hungry. So we thought, well, we'll fix hot dogs. We'll do some odds and ends. And after that summer, I told the director, I said, we, we have a problem. And I said, we've got kids coming to the library that are hungry and there's nobody at home. So we started uh, playing around with it a little bit, went to some um, seminars uh, that the state and uh, library had done and uh, our workshops. And we, the first one we went to, we said, oh, there's no way we can do a uh, summer lunch program. But this is our fourth year. We're doing summer meals. We've experimented along the way. Uh, our first year, we had shelf stable meals. And I don't know if anybody's familiar with shelf stable meals, but they came in a little brown bag and including the milk, nothing had to be refrigerated. And it was okay. The kids, uh, they sort of ate them. Uh, a little iffy. Sounds a little iffy. Yeah. A little <laughs> iffy. Um, we, we had partnered with the community and the community is going, oh, wait a minute, what is this stuff? And some of it wasn't really recognizable. I mean, the cheese was kind of mushy and, but it was there. It was free to us to offer to our kids. Um, and it was run through the food bank in Wichita and they delivered it to us on pallets and we had pallets of paper bags and we served them for the summer. Uh, we continued to experiment uh, the next year and we got hot meals from the people who do our senior meals. And that was better, but it wasn't food that kids liked to eat. It was uh, the senior citizens uh, meals and it wasn't really popular. So we started talking about self prep and I'll go more into that in a little bit. Uh, we had two sites. We did five, uh, the first year we did four days a week at the library and we took um, lunch to the Lake community on Friday. And then since then we've done five days a week and we still take lunch to the Lake community on uh, Friday. Um, the big thing was after that first summer was, you know, we were hearing from KSDE, hey, provide meals. You know, libraries get on board, uh, provide meals, um, make, um, you know, Kansas ranks so low in providing summer meals and school districts can't do it. You know, libraries need to get on board. And the question we had was, is providing a meal enough? And we didn't think it was. Um, and our goal was to get people into the library, to use the library, to not just a place where they could run in, grab their lunch and leave. And our philosophy was, you know, you get them in here, uh, get them using the uh, stuff and, you know, they'll use other things. They'll use our computers. They'll check out books, you know. Um, we didn't get any extra help um, and summers are always our busiest time with the summer reading program. So that was a, a problem. We were trying to figure out what we could do. And, you know, if we're adding something every day of the week, you know, we wanted to have some lasting impact. Um, the lady up there in the corner of the slides, she was hired on by uh, Kansas Extension and she came down and we sat and talked for an hour and I said, you know, my dream is that we could actually feed these kids. And she got invited through uh, uh, K-State Extension to attend a workshop on providing summer meals. She calls me up and said, we can do it. Um, and I said, okay. And she says, I'll be your facilitator. So Kathy came on board as someone from Extension who would facilitate what we were doing. Um, we knew that we had the books, we have games, but we felt like we needed some mentors. And 
Kathy says, well, we need to slow down. Let's let's make a summer meals action team. And the first thing we did was we thought, OK, we're going to contact the ministerial alliance, because if anybody in the community will be on board with helping kids, it'll be the ministerial alliance. It was interesting. We went to the meeting and there were, were four of the ministers there. And one of them said, absolutely not. We will not support it. We, uh, we feel that you're enabling parents to not take care of their children. And I walked away from that meeting feeling very frustrated. And I said to Kathy, I said, this is going to work. And I said, we're going to show them that this is more than enabling parents. And so we contacted some civic groups. Um, and people, with that exception of the one, got on board. They said, hey, you know, we're willing to give it a try. We realize that, you know, our community has more than 50% free and reduced lunch in the school district. And they realized that those kids receive meals at school, two meals a day during the school year. And in the summer, they don't get that. So... I think five churches, including two churches that are about 10 miles away from us, uh, volunteered to become mentors. Um, so we fed our sack lunches, the mentors read to the kids, um, and they taught them old games. We didn't want them doing the technology at lunchtime. We wanted them to learn some other things. So we taught them old maid, we taught them go fish, uh, different snap, different card games, um, things that were new to them. The kids did not, um, they weren't familiar with it and they have fun. And I have lots of pictures that I'll show and talk about the pictures as we go. At the end of the summer, we, we felt we were successful, um, but we wanted more. So in year two, in order to expand into the social and cultural and the healthy connections, we went with what we call Career Tuesday. Uh, another area that our community is weak in, um, we don't have a lot of kids who go on to college and get big careers. Um, we have a lot of people who stay in the community. They, um, they work low, jobs. They don't think they can do anything better. And so our goal was uh, every Tuesday to have someone come in and talk about their career, to encourage them that there's more out there than working at McDonald's. Working at McDonald's is fine, but if you want more, there's more out there. And we've had chiropractors, doctors, nurses, firefighters, lawyers, you know, people volunteer to come in during their lunch hour and talk to the kids. Um, on Fridays, we always, we felt that we wanted the kids to take a book home. And some of these kids are the kids who have a million overdues, you know, their parents won't let them check out library books because they don't want to pay for them, whatever. Um, I had a school teacher friend who was retiring and she had thousands of scholastic book points. And she brought those to me and she said, can you use these for your free book Friday? And I called Scholastic and little discussion. They said, well, you're, you're still a teacher and she can transfer those uh, points to you and you can order. So we ordered, I think we ended up with three or four boxes of books from Scholastic from her points. So every Friday, they got to take home a book. They'd say, can we have more than one? Well, that year we said, hey, we only have one. Um, the Methodist Church in the community has been a big supporter. They, uh, they had received a Healthy Congregations grant, and they helped us purchase a refrigerator and uh, some th uh, coolers to transport the food to uh, our lake community. 
and they also receive some money to do a fitness program. And so every Thursday we had Fitness Thursday and a retired PE teacher and her husband and a local uh, lady who's into fitness, they came and they would work with the kids for 15 to 30, 35 minutes and just getting them up, getting them moving, um, getting them away from their video games, um, kind of fitting in with what the lady said earlier about the uh, physical literacy, you know, getting them up and going. And that first, uh, second year, we had some what we called Entertainment Monday. Like I said, we're about 50 miles from the city. You know, there's no movie theater. There's no Walmart. Um, there's no entertainment either. And so we were able to bring in, with the help of a grant from the First Option Bank, we were able to bring in um, some entertainers. We had like a juggler and a magician and a storyteller and they would come in right after lunch or right before lunch, depending on what their schedules would allow and do a performance for the kids. And it was something that they wouldn't see otherwise. Um, so we had a real, real good response in year two. Um, the, Action team got together, and that's one thing I like about what Kathy's had us do. Um, you know, I have ideas, the director has ideas, um, you know, Kathy has ideas, but she, her action team, um, we go to them and we talk and they respond back to us and they say, hey, you know, we think you ought to try this. And sometimes they get me in trouble. But anyway, uh, year three, we tweaked a couple of the ideas. Um, we managed to get an entertainer every Monday, except for the last two in August. And the Friends of the Library sponsored along with the First Option Bank. And we were able to m have a bigger variety of entertainers. We brought in some musicians and magicians and um, storytellers and um wildlife people and just different things like that. We brought in a lady who uh, raises birds and does uh, bird shows. So we were able to expand our program. Um, Career Tuesday, we were more consistent and Kansas City Power and Light has a generating station about oh, five miles east of town here. And for the first time they got involved with us and they sent in mentors. Some of their workers would come in during lunch hour and mentor the kids. And they participated in the career uh, Tuesday, which really gave another aspect to career Tuesday. They sent two ladies in who worked out there. One of them had gone the traditional route of going to college and, you know, she loves school and she talked, you know, about how she, she got to be an engineer and the other lady said i didn't do it that way she said there are other ways to get there she said we both have basically the same job now but you know we're um we're different and she talked about how she didn't like school she ended up going in the military and there she learned a, a career and watching those kids sit there and listen to those two ladies talk really meant something because they heard her say, hey, you know, there's more than one way to get to a job as good as mine. Um, another thing that we implemented was a program called, called Try It, You Might Like It. And we would do it on Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on what other programs we had. But the lady who volunteers and helps prepare all the meals, she said, you know, let's try some different foods that these kids might not have tasted. And so she would bring different things. One time she brought in orange carrots, white carrots, purple carrots, you know, and different things, showed the kids, had them try them and, you know, then vote on what, what they liked. You know, she made cornbread. I was shocked at how many kids had never had cornbread. Um, she uh, did some different foods that they might not have tasted before. And she brought um, roast deniers from the field, you know, and then she cooked roast deniers for the kids to eat and, you know, 
had them shuck uh, the the corn and they were they were fascinated because most of the corn they have had came in a can or was frozen so seeing it from you know the raw state to uh eating it was good for them and we're a rural farm community but a lot of our kids aren't on farms a lot of our kids are living in town again low income um so that is an experience for them uh wellness wednesday this sh last year was hosted by the snap ed assistant and which is kathy and she used the usda uh, curriculum for summer meals and every wednesday they would do different activities um fitness thursday again was sponsored by the methodist church healthy congregations and free book fridays evolved into more than free book friday we had people giving us a lot of donations um of books and so if they said hey miss janet can i have another book we'd say yeah you can have a, a second book um and some of the churches said well what about the weekends they said these kids don't have food on the weekend so they came up with making snack bags for the weekends and they would put like oranges apples uh you know sometimes little debbies and you know things that might not be as good as we gave them during the week but um things that they could take home and have for over the weekend and this was all you know donated by the various churches and organizations and the biggest part of our program is based on our volunteers um we couldn't do this without our volunteers and i never realized how many uh volunteers you needed to handle something this big and just kind of to show you our program and this is something that i shared with our volunteers um we start in may as soon as school's out and you know we were averaging 54 um kids at different programs and we went to june and we served 575 lunches doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot for our community because, you know, a lot of our kids live in outlying areas. Um, and July it was about the same and August dropped off because we're getting ready to go back to school. But all of these people whose names are on here, they were volunteers. They spent hours here at the library helping. They were a partner. Either they gave us money or they showed up and uh, helped the kids. Um, we received a lot of financial support. Um, and what do these people do for us? They mentored our lunch program. Um, and by mentoring, we decided one of the things that we wanted to see was a lot of these kids don't have a good role model. And so when they would come in, we would set four kids to a table and a, an adult at the end of the table. So that adult had no more than four kids to try to, um, talk to visit with read um some of them provided classes some of them served lunch you know we had all kinds of uh things that these people were doing to help the kids um and help the library who benefited and like i said i have a lot of pictures i'm just going to go through some of the um the pictures and talk about what's going on and how they benefited this is one of our programs that we had um daycare providers brought kids parents um you know they're involved getting things um active um they're dancing around carrying on they're they're getting up and moving um we did a lot of uh games and stem type stem type programming during uh right before and after lunch um we did some cooking activities after lunch too. They've come and they've eaten. And um, Kathy from Extension would uh, stay and she would work with uh, the kids on learning to cook, you know, preparing healthy meals. One of our board members' husbands uh, works for uh, Johnson County Fire. And so he brought his equipment in, talked to the kids about uh, what it was like to be a firefighter and let them try on his equipment. 
this is an example of the mentor, you know, sitting at the table, the kids have their food, she's reading to them, um, they're engaged. Um, one of our storytellers that came in, um, you know, getting the kids involved, letting them know that there's, you know, things that they can do and enjoy. <coughs> she had a, um, an activity for them to do um, after they were done with the storytelling and they're all up there uh, drawing on their spaceship box. This guy over here in the blue, the kids call him grandpa. He's the Methodist church minister and he loves to play with the kids. He, he used to be a radio announcer. He, you know, just really gets involved with the kids and they love to play all made with him. And um, it will be really quiet. You know, everybody's eating. And then all of a sudden you hear the laughs and carrying on, you know, because he's he's got them wound up with um, having fun. And they fight over who gets to sit at his table. Um, the, the gentleman in the, the gray shirt, he's a retired Kansas City Parent Light. And he... Um, his, him and his wife have been coming in and volunteering and um, the kids really enjoy having the male mentor. Um, here's another example of a program afterwards that we did um, some STEM stuff, some Lego creations, um, having the kids work together. Our setup for lunch, this is um, the lunch line. They come in through our uh, door get their tray. We have people to serve them. Um, this is after we started doing our own uh, lunches. As I said, the uh, action team uh, sometimes gets me in trouble. They, they didn't like the sack lunches because they said it was a little questionable. Uh, they thought that the, the lunches for the senior citizens weren't exactly what the kids needed. And they felt that we could probably do our own lunches. And the lady all the way at the end, she has run a cafe and she's semi-retired. She does some catering and she said, I'll help you. I'm not sure she knew when she said, I'll help you, that she was going to be actually preparing the meals and, um, you know, then serving the meals and uh, making sure that all the, you know, things that we were serving met the requirements for KSDE and, um, you know, that we were giving the right size banana and, you know, we didn't have, uh, they were all getting their vegetables and, you know, that the meat was, had a sheet that went in the notebook. You know, there's a lot of, lot of um, paperwork that was involved. And, you know, without this crew back here, we wouldn't have been able to do it because we're still running the library in the other room. Um, we have a lot of puppet shows, things like that. Um, uh, a real good picture there. We're uh, working on a, a project we visited from different countries and um, the kids are making dollar horses. Um, the meals do look much better uh, after we started preparing them. The kids actually like the hamburger. They like the mashed potatoes. You know, uh, they know what they are. You know, they, they can recognize what is um, being fed. Um, more parent involvement uh, with our cooking programs. This is a Fitness Thursday program. Uh, the lady over here is a retired PE teacher. Um, she loves coming in and working with the kids and we have all ages. So, you know, she's got some really little ones there that she's trying to uh, teach to kick the soccer ball. Um, you know, and then she's got some older ones and their goal is just to get the kids up and moving. That was actually what you just mentioned, the ages. That is somebody had actually asked a question of what age groups are you working with in this program? Is, we, there, is there some sort of restriction on yes. minimum or maximum age? They can be from one year old to 18 years old. Ah. Uh, with the way KSDE has it set up, we can feed them uh, between one and 18 
for free. Um, mm -hmm. And we got reimbursed for the meals. Mm -hmm. So there are some restrictions and I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a little bit. Um, okay. There's another cooking one, you know, we were able to bring in um, a carnival type thing for one of the days and, you know, have the kids play um, again, sponsored by some of our uh, local, especially the bank. Um, you know, we played golf in the library. This is the, uh, you know, try it. You might like it. She um, did purple potatoes and she, um, baked them and asked the kids if they wanted to try them. And at first they weren't sure, but as you can see, the one little boy's got his hand up. He wants more. He, he definitely enjoyed that. Um, it seemed like we had an awful lot of rain in Kansas last summer. Um, and Jennifer, she's the third person who does the um, fitness. She had to come up with some games that they could do inside. So, you know, they're playing a basketball game with a, a laundry basket and a ball. She was very creative coming up with things that they could do inside when we couldn't take them outside. And, um, you know, there's a list, a bunch of our kids that were participating. Um, again, you can see the mentors. Um, Working at the high school gives me a little advantage. Um, I can pull in some uh, Stuco kids, library club kids, um, National Honor Society kids. When I don't have enough adult mentors, I can pull some high school mentors. Um, we have a couple of homeschool girls who uh, worked almost every day uh, as part of their community service project, and they, they would be mentors. Um, and just providing, um, somebody for the kids to talk to. Um, there you see the all made game. Um, one of our entertainers um, talking to the kids. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of parents, uh, grandparents that show up too. And sometimes they sit with their kids. Um, sometimes they end up having to be a mentor if I have more kids than um, I had uh, mentors that day. Um, and the kids really like when their teachers come. Um, the elementary school, um, if I can get some of them to come in and mentor, it gives the uh, teacher uh, another, or the kids see a teacher in another light. There's our firefighter again. Um, this was a Frisbee. We. Um, we bought Frisbees and every kid got to take home a Frisbee so they could play. And she's teaching them uh, different games to play with Frisbees. And this one, they're playing Frisbee baseball and they had to run um, the bases after they threw the ball. Um, lining up for lunch, that one of the first things we had to get was something to keep the food warm because, you know, once it's cooked, you know, what are we doing with it till we serve it? So um, Heartland Rural Electric uh, offered a grant and we were able to uh, get money from them to help buy the, the warmer to keep um, things warm. They're learning to play uh, baseball. Um, some of my best stories, uh, it's always fun when the, when the guys drop in and visit or volunteer and um, the local SROs um, have been in. Um, I haven't got them to actually sit down and mentor, but I've got them to come in and talk to the kids, um, wandering around the room. And, um, that's been a real thing. This guy's sitting right here. He came, uh, the first summer and he's helped every summer, him and his wife, but, um, he came the first summer and I had a table full of teenage boys. They're kind of rowdy. And he looked at me and he says, I don't think a book's going to work. And so he picked up the chair. He went, he sat down, he turned it around backwards and straddled the chair and sat down at the table. And he started talking about football. He started talking about hunting. Those boys did not want to leave. I mean, here's somebody that talks their language, somebody that uh, knows hunting, fishing, uh, and likes football. And 
you know, he's sitting there talking and I'm getting tears in my eyes because these kids are, um, they're engaged. Um, you know, I really hadn't been able to engage them earlier. You know, most of the time it was okay. You know, don't mess with the food. Don't, you know, don't bother the other tables. But, um, that day he, um, he worked with them, had them engaged. And I use that as an example. When I talk to the mentors before, uh, we start our first summer lunch, I say, you know, sometimes you look at what's at your table and then figure out, am I going to talk about, am I going to try to read them a book or play old maid, or am I going to talk to them? And, um, it's been, it's been a real challenge at times, but the mentors are getting more comfortable with it too. Um, Rita, our lady who does our, um, cooking for us, she's big on the fresh fruits and vegetables. And if anything, a lot of times we had more fruits and vegetables than they needed, but she wanted them to have a, a good selection. You know, if they didn't like carrots, there was tomatoes or there was celery or there was apples or oranges, you know, uh, or strawberries. Um, and she even brought blackberries for them to try, you know, things she wanted them to have those experiences that they might not get at home. Mm. Um, and options I'm sure is good because kids can be very picky. And, right. And specific about what they will and won't even go near. That's right. And some of them with our try it, you might like it. You know, they actually tasted something that they might not have tasted, but just because the rest of their friends were tasting it too. Yeah, peer pressure. Yes. <laughs> Um, a good cause. <laughs> here is um, a wellness Wednesday wrap with Kathy. It was one of the USDA um, uh, summer lunch things where each one of them had a part and they made a wrap. Um, here's another uh, where Rita is uh, giving them something to try to see if they might enjoy it. Um, people often ask us how we set the room up. Well, we're fortunate enough that we do have a meeting room that we can set up. And, um, the only problem is, is that usually right before we've had a program and right after we're doing another program and maybe story, our art cooking, whatever, but we've got, you know, we've got to be able to move things in and out and the parents have been real helpful. Um, you know, once we get done and they wipe the tables off, you know, they'll help push things back, put up chairs. But what we try to do is set up a table, like I said, with, um, four students or four kids and an adult. And that way the kids get, um, a, um, they get to visit. It's not the fact, uh, you know, that, uh, that person's too busy to talk to them. There's somebody there to talk to them. Um, our program got some recognition from KSDE. Um, we won the, uh, best volunteer of the year and the best programming of the year uh, in our second year. And so in our third year, Kansas Appleseed, which is a, a, stu a student advocacy group in Kansas, came to our meal and uh, visited and watched what we were doing. And the, she was working on a lunch across Kansas mural. So the kids all got to add something to the mural. And then she had lunch across Kansas t-shirts and she drew for people to get them. And Miss Rita actually got one. Um, so it was kind of fun to be recognized by, you know, somebody else because we are, a, you know, we're a pretty small group. Um, again, this lady here is a very strong advocate for our program. She is doing the community garden and Last year they got a late start on the community garden, but this year they're already working on it. And they did bring us some fresh fruits and vegetables from um, their garden. And that way we did some of the, from the uh, garden to the table program. Uh, getting the kids up and moving again. They're playing a nutrition game. Um, again, this is taco day and you know, they're, they're enjoying themselves. Um, KSDE, the program has had a lot of rules and they can't take any food home. They have to eat it all on site. And 
parents can't eat any of their food. So we had, and this is where, again, my action team uh, kind of uh, told me they wanted something different. So, um, but here we're still under the KSDE rules. Um, we're, we're following it. So we have to have the signs in case the inspector comes. Um, so parents know they're not supposed to take anything and all of that. More Fitness Thursday, um, our party, um, and we can't feed the parents uh, normally, but a, a group in town uh, provided donations. So the last uh, at our big party thing, we were able to feed the parents too. And it's, it's really good to be able to feed the adults um, because, you know, while they're sitting there eating, um, the kids see them trying things. They see them uh, tasting things and, you know, it's good. Um, and the free book Friday and the goodie bags just got bigger. Um, Miss Rita was guilty of um, somebody say, but Miss Rita, can I have three books this week? And, you know, we're not going to tell them they can't have books. Now, she did tell them this year, she said, now, if you've read it and you don't want to keep it, bring it back and put it on the table and uh, maybe somebody else will enjoy it. Um, U.S. Toy out of Kansas City donated all the uh, bags to us to put our um, books and our uh, goodies in for the kids to take home on the um, weekend. And they were good bags. Um, our volunteers, I can't say enough about them. I mean, we, we have a an appreciation night and this is a group of our volunteers that are here for the appreciation night. These two ladies are the ladies from Kansas City Power and Light who uh, went the different routes to um, become engineers and the two girls with them are my homeschool girls and they were really you know interested in what these ladies had to say. Um, and there they are talking to the kids. We're feeding our volunteers. Uh, First Option Bank has been really good to us. They've helped financially. This year, not only did they help financially, but they sent people down on their lunch hour to uh, work with the kids. And so we had different um, employees from the bank. And this last day of summer lunch, um, there was a, a discussion about some of these kids needed school supplies. And so several churches and organizations in the community, plus our friends of the library group got together and um, bought school supplies and they made bags. And the middle school secretary said she had some backpacks that were new that someone had donated to her. She donated them to us so we could fill a backpack for our middle school kids. Um, our other kids got U.S. toy bags full of school supplies. Um, just a real buy-in from our community. Um, you know, we'd say something and they would be there. Okay, I'm looking at the time. I got a few minutes here. Um, what What's next? Um, we had a person, and I'm going to see, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, really good. But we had an individual um, donate T-shirts. Storyteller. Storyteller Cafe, um, library, food, and fun. Yep, looks good. Nice. And um, working at the high school, we have a T-shirt shop at the high school. And so this was a win-win situation for our community. Um, the lady ordered the t-shirts through the high school and the high school kids designed the shirt and the money went to the high school um, and the shirts came to us to give to donors and volunteers. And so we're handing out shirts as people donate money and donate time. Um, so we have a lot of Storyteller Cafe shirts running around town now. Um, Next is changes in the way we do things. Um, like I said, we've worked with KSDE for the last three years. Um, 
And my action team said, do we have to do that? Can we become self-funded? Can we do this on our own? And I said, well, even if we do it on our own, we're still going to follow the regulations. And they said, no, that's not our, our problem. They said, our problem is, is we're throwing away a lot of food because the kids can't take it home with them and the parents can't eat it. And so I visited, you know, we're still on good terms with KSD, KSDE people. I visited with them and I said, you know, here's what they're wanting me to do. Can we do that? And they said, sure, you can do that. You know, we recommend that you stay within the guidelines. And I said, well, I fully plan to stay within the guidelines because, you know, we might have to, uh, you know, come back. And um, so I put the challenge out to the, the community. I said, you know, the action team says they want us to be self-sufficient. And I said, I need $5,000 by mid-March. I'm $230 short. I, I'm, uh, and we're not to mid March yet. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh, so the community has really backed us up. Um, we have received a couple of, uh, grants. We got a Walmart, a small Walmart grant and another one from Heartland Rural Electric. Um, but most of that has been a hundred dollars here from somebody, a hundred dollars there from somebody, you know, saying, Hey, we, we appreciate what you're doing and we think this is the way to go. Kansas City Power and Light was going to do a community drive to buy the paper products, um, but they've had a change in management. So I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but at the action team meeting, they said they wanted to do, uh, go ahead and do that community paper drive. Um, we're changing some of our programming around, um, allowing more mentor time uh, because they said the 15, 20, 30 minutes that they got wasn't enough. Um, we spent uh, time thanking our mentors um, in 2017, and I found the um, the quote that um, uh, bad libraries build collections, nice. good libraries build services, and great libraries build communities. And I told my uh, mentors that you know they were part of a great library because we were building a community, and they really you know they feel pretty passionate about it. Um, mm -hmm. And let's see, I got about three minutes left. Uh, does anybody yep. have any questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a problem. No, you did. You did perfect. Um, yes, there is. Thank you very much, Janet. That was that was really am amazing what you pulled together there um, and for so many years and it's a very uh, classic way of the library reaching out, looking in the community to see what is the need what's going on that we can get out there and be involved in and, and show what we can do and that's not just come and check out a book or uh -huh. come and hear, hear a story time yeah um someone actually does want to say for you're just mentioning about needing to raise money um how can we donate uh well you said you're short some of your funds uh -huh. Is that something that anyone can just uh, help oh, you out yeah. with? Is there like a site or it's somewhere our, to go to? Or? It's our friends of the library. They're our 501c3, so we can um, run the things that are um, donated, can be tax deductible. And, mm -hmm. you know, if somebody wants to donate, uh, we can uh, we can make that happen. I don't have an online site. It would have to be mailed to our library, but mm -hmm. they could contact the library and we could let them know if somebody wanted to help out. Yes, if you're interested in helping support their program so they can, you know, fund it, um, be self-funded, email Janet, find out how. Um, all right, we do have some comments then coming in and questions. Um, if you do have any questions or comments, type it into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface and we'll get them done. Um, this is the last session of the day, so we have plenty of time to get to everybody's questions for, for Janet. Um, someone does say they love all the great programming ideas involving the retired PE teacher made me smile and gave me a few ideas. Um, thanks and keep it up. Okay. And as Miles does comment about how um, I love the intergenerational aspects, um, very beneficial for kids and for retirees who want to stay involved and to give back. And that is an area that we're going to work on more as I, as I'm retiring from the school and coming uh, here more, um, we're, we're seeing the community age be more, 
50 to 90 instead uh -huh. of the little kids. And yeah. so, you know, we're, we're looking at doing some real cross-generational programming, um, getting them a little bit more involved. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. Yes. The, the, post baby boomers or is this mm -hmm. the baby boomers that is you're talking <laughs> i'm not sure what they are <laughs> um someone also says um yeah the retired pe teacher that apparently caught a lot of people's attention it was mentioned by many people that that's a great seeing them come in and provide their expertise at the library um, oh, and someone says, I've been toying with this idea for the past few years. Um, thanks for all the ideas to take it back to my board. Hey, perfect. <laughs> and if she needs more information or he needs more information, let me know. This is, you know, like I said, this is one of the things I'm pretty passionate about now that I've gotten involved with it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I taught elementary for 18 years before I became a, a, a high school librarian and seeing, uh, knowing where a lot of these kids came from, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're definitely filling a need. And um, so I'm, I can get pretty passionate about this one. <laughs> yes. If you need someone to help you sell this to your board, <laughs> Janice, the one to call. <laughs> All right. So um, any other last minute questions you want to ask of Jan about how she did this? You did a really good, um, type it into the question section. Um, you did a great job of, um, you know, explaining exactly how you pull it off and, um, I'm glad that it's it wasn't just come have lunch. There's so many other things involved in it and so many different things they can do. Kids can get bored <laughs> with, you know, too much of the, the same old, same old. So I think it's it's amazing. And just just getting them up, moving around, getting them mm -hmm. involved in something. Um, we have no summer school program, no, um, mm -hmm. you know, so like I said, being a, a a, a teacher, a former teacher, I know the summer slide. And mm -hmm. um, so we're, you know, we're providing um, the best we can do to help those kids stay on top of it. And I, you know, I'd really kind of like to track those kids and say, hey, you know, mm -hmm. Johnny and Susie came to summer library. How, how was their Ames web scores when they came back in the fall, yeah, you know? Afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they have to be better. We we had them reading books. <laughs> so have you? You've I hope you've had repeat uh, customers each summer. Um, some yes. of the same kids and still in town, still coming back. Right, and so um, we we this last summer we mm, increased like thirty three percent in our attendance. Um, oh. So um, you know we had our repeat people, but we also had um, uh, a lot of new people, mm -hmm. and. The lake development, this this one, um, it's about five miles from town, and we have a, a good number of our kids live out there, and they can't get to the library. Um, so we had a couple of retired teachers say, hey, you know, on Friday, we'll take lunch out to those kids. And um, so lunch outreach program. Yeah, yeah we, we do that. And, you know, they've tried to include some of the things we do. It's a little harder off site to do that. Um, but, um, you know, there are a lot of options. Um, and I know a lot of states are encouraging libraries to do this. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, if you're interested, we have several, I presented at a couple of, um, of the Kansas programs uh, mm -hmm. for KSDE and Kansas Appleseed. So, um, and, and it's good to hear the different things ideas that people have. Iola for one has a bus that goes around and serves the kids off of a bus. You oh, know, cool. that's a dream, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, insurance and uh, liability and all of that. I, yeah. I'd that's rather different have them like, come to me. <laughs> yeah. Like a bookmobile, but a lunch mobile. Yes. And it's a little, there's, yeah, there's a lot more to that. It's having like a lunch truck type thing. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. All right. Well, it doesn't look like anybody has been typed in any desperate questions they need to ask you right now. So I think um, um, just some comments and great program. Glad to have you share it with them. All so right. I think well, we will you. wrap it up for you. Thank you very much, Janet. This was great.